So patch 11.3 was all about giving more support to bonded units, and I felt like that plays really well with Battle Trance Alchemy. So I want to go over some of the changes here to the deck and explain what's going on, and then we'll get in some games with live commentary for reference. So before, one of the problems that I found with Alchemy was consistency. We didn't quite have room for Coral and Burna for the discard package. I'm talking about, uh, you know these ones here right expensive cards nine and eight to put in the deck and then of course the discard targets but we want to play a lot of key bronze cards so it doesn't really fit naturally unlike most skelliga decks so we just weren't drawing key win conditions like Gedneth and you know heat wave mushy truffle the important stuff right we're getting stuff when we need it okay so that's pretty much one of the big problems the other one was control but usually with these point heavy decks, big engine decks, you can't have both. There are very few exceptions to that rule, so I'm fine with that. But I was able to solve the problem with something as simple as free company. So with this card here, choose an allied bonded unit, then play its top copy from your deck with a cooldown of three. So with this here, basically what we're doing is we're able to spawn a copy off the Iron Falcon Trabador. Right, we spawn a one power copy of a bonded unit and it locks it and we have it on this you know on the same row there and we have two different options so it could be the half rue or it could be the crow clan preacher usually in a round one i will pick the half rues because they have really good reach if i'm able to take the half rue at one power and purify it with gremist or you know purify it with an ale we have damage that we can help reduce points on the opponent's side of the playing field. And, you know, what's nice about it too is that when these are spawned in at one, they count as damaged. So the passive of the leader is whenever we play an alchemy card, heal a random allied unit by one. So even if we don't have the Gremis to purify or the Ale to purify, we're still getting that extra ability of being able to get that heal. So we're getting the return on the investment pretty much right away. And it could be even every turn, depending on how many alchemy cards that we play. This is really nice to set one up. And then what we can do is when the order kicks in for free company, we can choose that bonded copy. We could play the other half roof from deck. So they immediately come down at eight points instead of six. It's a lot faster curve when it comes to getting that bonded ability for the half roofs. And then three turns later, we can go, we could take another half row out of the deck. And then we can go as far as taking Mushy Truffle for, again, another half rue. And then obviously they're coming down at eight points every single time, which is a very good value. If not the best value that you can get with exception to like Priestess for a four provision card, right? It's, it's up there. It's definitely up there. And if it's scenario round, we go, we take Crow Clan Preachers. We just make a bunch of them, right? That's sort of the rationale with that. And, you know, if this gets answered, it's not the end of the world. If this eats removal, it's probably better than seeing scenario eat removal or something else, right? Another strategy we have for early game is to put down Crow Mother. She comes out at four points, spawns two crows at two points each, right? It doesn't seem like much. It's only an eight for 10 on deploy. However, what we can do with Axel, if we can pull these two cards in the same round, is that we can take Axel on ranged row and we can transform adjacent crows into crow messengers which are these ones here and so with these ones here summon all copies from this uh, of this unit from your graveyards in a row if you hold an alchemy card also summon them from the deck so what we're looking to do is get the two in the grave we can thin out the other two if we want right we could play one from hand as well so we have four in the grave and then we have crow mother in the grave so it, that's four by five that's 20 points and then I can take it back with Freya's Blessing. And if we have something damaged on the board, we get the one heal. If we have the bonded Crow Clan Preachers on the board, when we play that, we get the two boost each. And then we get the 20 point slam. So we have the ability with this here to contest in a round one by pushing our opponent with simple point slams from half ruse. And then to bleed with something like Scenario and the Crow Clan Preachers. And then go into a round three that's just a nice, short, clean round three with something as simple as Freya's 
and a 20 point slam. And that makes it very difficult for them to compete with us. We have forms of carryover like the mushy truffle. We don't have to click the order. If we do click the order, we want to use it again in the following round. We have the dwims as well. And you can see on the range row here, refresh the order of an allied location. You're probably doing that nine times out of 10. However, you see here on melee, set an allied scenario to the final chapter. So with that, you can actually put Gedneth back to the final chapter if we finish the scenario. And if you have enough druids in hand, you could proc your scenario again. The benefit of doing that would be getting the chapter two payoff, which is spawn and play a Marjoram. So we could use that defensively. We could boost something up. You know, maybe it's the free company to keep it alive. Maybe it's the Gremis, whatever the case. Or we can use it offensively. And if the enemy unit is three power, then we're going to be killing it with the Marjoram before it boosts it. So we could use it strategically as well to kill off maybe tokens and an elf swarm or fire sworn zealots or whatever the case or something that just is low power like a reaver, right? Depending if it has armor. So just uh, some food for thought with that one there. This deck's a lot of fun, guys. Really happy to have put this one together. In previous patches, I had a different take on alchemy. This has been my favorite one in a very long time. Some considerations I know you guys will probably ask about or suggest in the comments. We'll just address it first. My previous version had Rune Mage, which I really liked, and the uh, Stribog as well. You'd have to sacrifice probably Crow Mother or Heat Wave and go super greedy with it there. I don't love it. That's why I didn't do it. Another thing here would be the Bride of the Seas a consideration. Right, but I feel like Bride of the Sea is sort of overshadowed by the Crow Clan Druid. And the problem is that I have a lot of things that I'm looking to set up for Grave, and I have a lot of things that bring stuff back. Like Fakusha's uh, Resurrect, you have the Messengers that could be awkward playing early, depending on our hand state. The phrase Blessings can't really be played in round one. So I didn't want to go even put even more graveyard interacting cards that's why i only have one of the druids instead of two so that our round one hands always good so those are just a few things that you could put some people like draco turtle draco turtles all right draco turtle would be better if you had the priests and what i notice about the priest draco setup it's easily countered by locks it's not the end of the world i do have purifies but also with the half roo slam strategy instead you're getting more immediate points right you're just slamming eight 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 instead of having to rely on engines to get to that point after a few turns so it just helps us keep up with the point slam meta so that's pretty much why i did everything i hope you guys stuck around for this part of the video and it answers any questions you have if i missed anything or if you think of any questions let me know and i'll be happy to answer those in the comments below but uh, this is definitely something you want to give a try. And I think we went 9 for 10 out of the last 10 games that we played. It was really good. I'll post the exact record uh, on the deck guide on playgwent.com so you guys see the success rate. We're mid-2400, so it's nothing to, to brag about. But it, it's merit. It shows that the deck's doing what it's supposed to do. And I believe that you can climb to pro rank with the deck. No problem if you can master how to pilot the deck. So without further ado, guys, let's get into the gameplay. I got four games of live commentary for reference today. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm starting to do this full time again, guys. So I'll be uploading every single day. Thanks. All right, we have imprisonment and we go first. Hopefully in round one, we just play a bunch of point slimy stuff and not have to worry too much about the locks. However, I sort of argue that maybe we try to get them out earlier, but I feel like this is going to be the key just to getting out of the round. So, free company could eat a leader charge, which is not a bad thing. I have to make sure I put one of these back in deck so I can actually play it. I'll do it like that, okay? You can purify the spawn to get the rain for two turns. We have that and that. Honestly, I could put this back in deck too. Now, I don't want to hold both of these. It's kind of expensive. That's bit better so I've got some ideas here right you'll see you can kiss my tail goodbye. Oh, 
Okay. We enact the will of the cosmos. If I lock it, they try and replay it. That's the worst part about the whole thing. Here comes a leader charge, yeah? There you go. I don't have an answer to the scenario. Literally missed the Onero. Unless I get it right here. No. It's too bad. It's gonna have to be Freya as that goes. It's not a round one card we can play. And we'll stick to the script here with uh, Grimmest. Not a moment's pace. A beautiful pair of legs, please. Gross. Wait, if you, you can't infuse something that's locked, it's not... The infusion doesn't work. I probably still... Probably still do this. That's a lesson for them today. All right, so now we got look, 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 look. Um, I don't think I'm gonna click rain on any of these. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll click rain on like this one, we'll say, okay? We'll do that. And then we can get that purify off. So now I can trade four for two. And then I guess we gotta unlock our situation, right? Well, probably this one, because we could purify it. One who is blind Makes sense. Gremist is actually the MVP. In fact, I should be really... Si I'll Fakusha for Gremist later. Maybe that's more important. You will never forget. Yeah, maybe that's more important. We take the fin. Take that. We purify the three. I think we have to take this. Purify the two. This is a three as well. It's also a three. Oh yeah, that's my turn. I forgot how clutch Gremist is against Caldus. Yo, it's getting kind of out of hand here, don't you agree? Well, actually, no. Nah, I think we're okay. Here, let's just keep going a little bit. Refresh the order. Traveling is an option, you see. One of the better ones. Hit him with this. Because we got two, right? And then this is a boost self by four situation right now. Into an earth. This is all I 
I messed up. <laughs> three. Oh, yeah, it's a three and three. Travel makes one modest. We'll see how far they want to go with this whole thing. Oh, they got rain for the two. See Mata, Prophet, Master, Bravins. All fits the grand scheme. They get that back over two turns. Mm, I'll take a lock. That's at that one. That's at three. Do we have? We have. We're literally thinning so hard off this card, it's ridiculous. There you go. It hurt, didn't feel great, we got it. So, now we're gonna draw well too, cause we thinned so well. Carry over this. Uh, that's not bad actually. Do you think I can try and snag crows real quick just to Hold up, hold up, hold up. Take, let's take her. You see the vision here? We transform. And then we swing. If I'm lucky enough, we'll play this here. You will not regret this, good sir. Uh, scared. Nah, we gotta keep going. I, I wonder if we could do an eight drop here. And take Freya's for the swing. 16 points, 20 point carryover. 20 points in a short round. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good call. It's tempo. Do we save Heat Wave or do we try to spend Heat Wave to just get out something else? I think we probably save Heat Wave. Yeah, big time. Boom. Boom. Okay. So, we need druids for scenario. So, a perfect situation would be Oniro, Geneth, and Fukusha. <laughs> I got pretty much everything I want. I get two mulligans. I'd rather just the, the flexibility, you know? Look at this. If they have Xavier, we're just cooked. Okay, good. Sure. Do you have a heat wave? Dare 
So we'll take Fakusha for one, and then we get the Crow, and then we take this to Vanish to play uh, Ale or something like that. It's probably the situation. Fakusha. We could also do for him. This is like 11 points in two turns of rain in a short round three. I feel like it has a higher ceiling because they have armor. It plays a little bit more around the tall punish too. I don't know. Look at this though, it's kind of nuts, isn't it? Pull the whole damn board up. <laughs> we didn't have to do it that way, but it looks cool. Show them that we don't need the Preachers to win. I think we're in a pretty good spot here. We gather in secret. These aren't infused. This is infused. We'll just heat wave whatever we... I'll probably merge them off the three. Look at this. Boom. Boom. Oh my gosh. We got five cards on the range row. They're going to take this out with a vill. I guess that makes just a little bit more room. We got the, the 16 point swing coming at you in a second. Yeah, no regrets on the rain. It wouldn't have made sense to bring back a 4P. We wouldn't have had enough. So, realistically, it makes sense to me to wait till this bleeds to play an alchemy. But at the same time, we do want to make sure that we heat wave the best target. So, in that case... I'm just going to take, yeah? Perfect fit. Crow Mother bringing home all the crows. That's so sick. There you go. Okay, so we're playing against elves. We go first. They have a lot of control. We have a lot of engines, so they're going to trade pretty well. Heat wave for my scenario, probably. Put this back. We could take a thin out here. This for... I think this goes back. This for this. We could start slamming down half roos in round one. I have both half roos in hand though, so it's gonna be it's gonna be free company goes to thin these. It's just a matter of do I wanna take free company early and do that? I only have one alchemy, right? And we don't have Onero, so we can't get truffle at least. I think it's just gonna be leaning into the half roos and looking for a pass. Now, we could take this and just figure out what we're getting. That's actually not better. Ale's not bad. This is more valuable. I mean, this will play this. Okay, that's better. It actually puts her online right away. And it makes the ale play for six points. Cool. I love getting tempoed on. It feels good. Golden you, narrow stem, chanterelle, or false chanterelle. Four less two is two plus five six. I mean, 
Don't worry, I wasn't gonna do it twice. A beautiful pair of legs, please. It sucks that we actually set up a waylay for them. Let us sing the song of steel. Oh. We shall drive the ape man into the sea. Best drown yourself with those damn nets. This would probably be a nice combo for a rain deck if you wanted to make rain work. The Falcons and the Half Roos. Just do it that way. You guys ready to lose on even? I sure am. We get carry over from the messengers and then the rest is played. Okay. Now it actually feels very good to have two of these. I don't know if I want to go as far as taking Travador, but what would Travador take out? We make maybe a copy of that, and then we just go that for that. Okay. I'm probably going to put this back and look for something else. Why? They're just throwing it down. You you won on even. They tried so hard to win on even, and I guess their hand just is really bad. They're gonna fill up their space. I don't think they're gonna have enough room. But then again, we probably won't be able to keep anything on the board. Don't have to worry about free company anymore. What's a uh, win condition we don't have? These three? Well, these two more than anything. Or really, just Fakusha. Well, what's worth? I need to keep that. We need to keep that. These are just too valuable. Honestly, I could probably put back this even. Regrets. Immediately <laughs> regrets. All right. That's fine. We'll get this out first. Gets heat wave. We'll get this out second. No way. Gag them. Dwan will not be heard. So, I'm trying to decide. This is probably, like, we we probably lock it. But I just wonder if I don't lock it, will that make them overswarm faster? It will. But will it be game winning? I don't know. A lot of their control depends on them having elves on the board, so it makes it harder for me to actually, you know... It's not a row thing, is it? If you control, so it's either row matters, doesn't matter. We definitely want cards to die here. I guess it would have made sense to actually take this on range to free space, that's fine. 
So I'm going for slams on these two. Probably just proc the scenario first. Six, seven. Well, no, we can play the rise. I'm on the bottom row. I'm like worried for no reason. Oh. They missed Alyssa. That's a lot of points they lost. I feel like they might have the heat wave, but now that they see the potential of this, you know, it's not really good. So I'm going to click when I can. Revenge of the Crows. Holy Verno? Probably. Why do they want Gremist gone so bad? It's not that important to me anymore. So, spores would hurt, heat wave would hurt, maybe they're just saving heat wave for one of those, probably. Oh, take eight slam. I kind of want to like make everything look symmetrical and sick, so we'll keep we'll keep these like this. Yeah, we'll put it here. I just put that there, uh, just because I have like flashbacks to <laughs> tavern brawls and treasons, but there's no other reason. Uh, maybe a random red haze, but I doubt it. You never know these days, man. Okay. That takes away some value from something, right? Here. You can kiss my tail goodbye. Do we just click? Nah, no. Nah. Last card's probably heat wave. We'll take the eight point here. Take uh take this we'll hit on a four get the heal value there and even if they do heat wave it we win yeah it's over They're making me sit through it like it's Reavers or something. I'm playing a pretty wholesome deck, you know? Unless it's Scorch. Or it's Ign... Oh, no. And they're just BMing hard. Nah, I doubt it. I doubt it. Spores. And for the next game, here we have uh, Nilfgaard and Slave. Is it five or six? Still don't even know. Let's say. Six, okay. So round one will look like us playing this. 
I want to hold on to this. I might actually put Fukusha back, but it's hard to say. I feel like it's probably more of a priority to mulligan back one of the Dwims. Trabador makes this. We summon this. Two of these is pretty good. We could take a third. If it lasts, this is probably not going to stick, though. Let's be honest. I wish I could take the mulligan on that. I was actually trying to. Okay. We'll take this, and then we'll throw something. Just so that it doesn't play into assassination. And if they want to take leader, then I guess that's just the way it goes. Wow. It's not even 8 in the morning. Some people have no chill. So, the leader probably wins them the round. Yeah. I shall not repeat the leader's mistakes. We definitely play a little bit more here. Best drown yourself with those damn nets. Thirteen points plays into a pretty good heat wave. If I take it away, it's at sixteen. It doesn't really tempo, but there's a chance we can get out. They hit for six, we hit for eight. I could take Fakusha, and I don't mind because I don't want them playing Fakusha, right? But at the same time, Axel's not bad here either. Now they just have to do 10 points. Yeah, okay. That's cool. All right. Do I enjoy torture? Perhaps a bit. Crow mother, preacher. And preacher. Now we just have to defend like a very annoying bleed, right? At least I get Vilg out of the way. Okay. So we have to play around Terra Nova. And we have a stick band play. But other than that, it's not too bad. Okay. Good. Truffle for carryover. That's my coffee machine going off. Crow Mother is good carryover as well, actually, because it doesn't have the... Uh, doesn't have the spying when it comes back, right? They can't coo it. We'll do it that way, just because I feel like it's just better. 
I don't really want to play things that have spying, but obviously we have two things we got to play. Let's try not to get taller. So I thin out the crows, which is fine. That's eight points. Take that, we take these. We have eight, we have six. We have, uh, we need two druids, one and two. Yeah, I guess that's all right. I gotta really crank it here. Okay, I'm gonna lock that for sure. Maybe we can give it some time though first. It's gonna be Onero. It's gotta be on that one. Gotta keep them both alive, you know? There you go. Get out of here. <laughs> and next up here we have Overwhelming Hunger. It's gonna be Death Wish, yeah, okay. So we pretty much give them round one. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the Thin. We're gonna take the Travadors into the half ruse and try to get that carryover started. I think we're going to put this back. Good. I'd like to take another mulligan, but I don't want to risk anything. <sighs> you know what? Okay, good. This is not... This looks like V. I don't know, I see one card and I start getting all weirded out, but we'll see. Just take that. You guys have no idea, man. Realistically, it should have been this first. But we're only going to take two copies, which would be six turns, so if we play to four, we're fine. Okay. Something tells me no ritual if they're playing Arcaspore. We have the Gremist to like clean these up and then just go from there. Get out the second one. Take a purify click. Take an alchemy click. Guys, I'm telling you, this is me. This is just for the thin. Or maybe as a backup to keep one of these alive, right? Okay. A beautiful pair of legs I fish it's so pretty. I should have put it here. I figure why don't we split up the rows a little bit, you know? So when we play the half through this way, it's four points plus the four points of rain. We're actually getting eight point travadours. 
take a one, please. There you go. Nice. Even though it's not an engine, so I'm thinking that I actually put more, I guess, trash on the board. So we'll put something like that to make things a little nicer here. I don't think it's V anymore. Usually you don't run Maruna in that list, it's too expensive. Just could it be classic Death Wish? Damn. At least we're playing around these by accident. Here, so we have one more in deck. And I have one alchemy in hand. We'll play the crow. I have a heat wave target. Sure. At least we tempo with the free company here. We'll take this now. I should probably respect like a wear rat because they're playing classic cards like a mana core for example so we can keep this going if I take truffle into one of the creatures right which might just be the way I know it's not like an immediate payoff or anything like that, but... A couple turns, it'll matter. Herondite at six. I think we just shut him down. There you go. Once I saw Aaron died, I kind of just want to finish the round. No more back and forth. We thinned out very well, okay? So we have carryover with this one here we take. We pull scenario. Can I just not play that? There we go, that's a bit better. Probably gonna go for the 2 0, okay? We get the preacher down, we spawn the crows, we take this, we finish the scenario. It's probably good. They have a dead laugh swing, I'm sure of it. There you go. I'm not scared. Kind of scared. A little bit scared. <laughs> Uh, that changes things a little bit. I kind of want to put as much rain as I can here, so we'll do it this way. I'll put it. Uh, I'll put it here, but then we'll take the other preacher. Is it a preacher that I want? Yeah, yeah we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of alchemy we can play here. There you go. And. Uh, just in case I'm feeling the pass, you know. I don't believe in Igni. 
I'm definitely like the worst candidate for playing around Igni. I just let him have it so many times, but I don't think it's going to be the case here. When you see Erendite, that's where the provisions are filled, I think. We're not done if you can steal the wall. And just a sexy little cog on that fucked up machine. I could just play around it though. One for potions, one for soup. We take Marjorome on the 10, and then it fixes it. Rather lose 18 than 22, or in this case, 28. I think we just go all in and win. I don't have a dirty man. This one hell of an imagination. Trouble Location. Option, you see. One of the better ones. Last card, Arundite. Here you go. Unless they took the mulligan thinking that they'd want to save that. Ah. Uh, we were so close to finishing that game. 